You mentioned Alex Van Pelt moments ago. You go way back with the current OC in New England, and it's just a whole new day. First of all, the fact that the guy who is coordinating the offense actually has a title, (laughs) you know, (laughs) right? And 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 there's that's it for starters. But we we all know that it's a whole new uh, situation there, and he has. Uh, to call Drake May a mold of, of clay is, is quite, you know, uh, an image. But that said, this is a huge moment. Certainly when Mac Jones, um, the, as the narrative goes, didn't have over the last couple of years uh, the, the best setup. Do you think Alex Van Pelt is is a, a good setup for Gerard Mayo with Drake May clearly the future, Drew? Yeah, you know, I really think I've liked what the Patriots have done. Start with Gerard. I, I think he's a really special uh, dude and a uh, uh, and is going to be a great coach. I got to spend a bunch of time with him. We, we went on a trip together. Uh, Mr. Kraft took us to uh, to Israel, and we, both Gerard and I were on that trip. I got to spend a week with him. You know, he's 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 almost like a Bond villain. You know, he's an NFL linebacker, um, but in you know, so he's got that physique. But in high school, he was a white hat hacker. So he would go, he was a computer nerd. So he'd go break into companies and then he would tell them how he broke, how he broke in so they could go fix their, fix their problem. So you take an NFL linebacker body and you've got a a computer nerd brain, you know, he's sort of a, yeah, sort of like a superhero or bond villain kind of dude. And he's a great guy. The players all love him. So you start there. And then Alex, Alex uh, understands, uh, you know, coaching quarterbacks in a way that I think you can only understand if you played the position. And Alex, you know, I, I make fun of him all the time. And I tell his guys whenever I'm in there, one of their meetings, you need to listen to this guy because here's this six foot fat dude that doesn't throw it very hard that played for 11 seasons in the NFL. He obviously didn't do it based on his physical tools. He did it with his brain. Um, and I think Alex is also really good at understanding, you know, how to set quarterbacks up for success. Um, you know, meaning, you know, you you don't just have your offense and that quarterback has to fit the mold. You take the quarterback that you have and then you build the offense to suit him. Uh, And I know that Alex will do a great job of that. Um, I I don't think we still know, you know, who's going to be under center in first game, whether that's going to be Jacoby or whether it's going to be Drake. But uh, but I think that, that, uh, you know, Alex is going to give Drake May his best chance uh, uh, for success, whether that's immediately or whether that's uh, in the future. Well, what is your opinion on the throwing somebody in the deep end of the pool right away? I mean, at Cincinnati, that is not uh, that's not uh, for the faint of heart. What do you no, think that's about not that? An easy way to, that's not an easy way to start. You know, it's a, it's it's just it's such an individual decision, right? You know, it's about looking at um, your guy and is he ready to do that yet? Uh, some guys are, and some guys need some time. Uh, and then you also have to look at your team, you know, is your team in a place that, uh, that sets this quarterback up for success as a, as a, as a young guy. Um, you know, for me, um, I felt like I was ready. Um, and obviously Parcells felt like I was ready. So I started the first game, uh, you know, we had to go play at the bills, which at that time, that was a very daunting task because they were, had just come off their third of four straight Super Bowls. Um, you know, so I, I remember being terrified, you know, seeing Bruce Smith come out of the tunnel. Uh, as I was warming up like, man, I don't belong here. I just watched that guy play in the Super Bowl from my dorm room, you know, about like four or five months ago. Um, but I felt like I was ready for it. And, and uh, so it's, it's a highly personal thing. And I, and I know that, uh, again, you know, back to Alex, I know that I know that Alex will make the best decision both for Drake and for the team. Um, you know, going into that game. And if, if, if he feels like Drake is ready and gives the team the best chance to win and also uh, can set him up for success in the future, then he'll, then he'll be under center for that first game. Uh, if he's not ready and the team's not ready around him uh, to give him uh, some chance of success, you know, then they'll let him sit and, and let the veteran play. Yeah, Marshall Falk once told me a story, Drew, of going to Rich Stadium in western New York and standing on the sideline, I think it was a Col- he was the, with the Colts at the time, and standing on the sideline and, it, it, and just noticing the the sort of curvature of the of the field, like it was it was kind of you know bubbled up, right? And and watching the heat rise off of the turf, and then out of the tunnel, all greased up, was Bruce Smith, 
and he just w- felt his stomach drop just watching him through the you know the heat rays coming off of the turf there that's the story oh dude, it was ter- oh dude it was terrifying you know i'm standing there i see bruce bruce come down out of the out of the tunnel um and not to, just not just bruce but you got daryl talley you got cornelius bennett um you know jim kelly one of my heroes comes running out and he was at least nice enough to come over and pat me on the butt and say good luck rook um i was like oh thank you mr kelly you know can i have your autograph after the game um but yeah i mean it was it was it was pretty terrifying and then bruce put uh he kind of he was the one that gave my gave me my welcome to the NFL hit. Uh oh. One of those hits that today he would have been fined and uh, thrown out of the game and, <laughs> and uh, jail for. And instead, then it was just a legal hit where he put his helmet right between my shoulder blades and they had it in slow mo. It was a good enough hit that I was the star of his Nike commercial the next year. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it was uh, it was crazy stuff, man. So um, you know, if Drake's ready for that then they throw them in. If he's not ready for that, then they don't. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.